thanks. Okay. All right. So we have our next lightning talk. Um, we have um, speakers from the Canoe Project. So if you didn't know how to say that, that's how you say it, Canoe, although they might correct me when they show up in case they get it wrong. Um, and they are um, working on creating industry standards for in developer, internal developer platforms. So I'm going to add to stage Brandon Leach. Hello, Hello. Brandon. Hello, how are you? Nima. Nima. And I don't know how long you've been, if you've been with us all day, but Canoe got some shout outs earlier in the day uh, during the, the first or second keynote. So um, so that was good. We, we could put a little teaser for your talk in now. Uh, so like to see these projects get in love and thanks for educating us about it. This is what Cube Crash is all about. Absolutely. All right. So we're going to remove ourselves and Nima, I will add your slides to the talk. Okay, wonderful. All right. Um, Brandon, you want to go first uh, with the introductions? Yeah, awesome. So uh, my name is Brandon Leach. I'm a senior director of engineering at Autodesk. I work in an organization called Developer Enablement. Um, and in Developer Enablement at Autodesk, we have goals around increasing internal developer productivity and growing our third-party ecosystem. Awesome. So um, hello, everyone. Nima Cabiani here. I'm a principal architect with AWS, working with a lot of our customers on uh, platform engineering and developer platforms. And we're happy to talk to you about Canoe. And that's the right pronunciation, actually, Canoe. Uh, with that, Brandon. Yeah, so the Canoe project you know, started as a group of, of enterprises, actually from a, a uh, meeting with uh, Nima's team, where we'd get together and we discuss kind of our platform engineering efforts. and. We had a, um, we were all using some tooling that was that was starting to be uh, uh, seeing a downtrend in community adoption. And we were trying to figure out like how we we're gonna build our internal developer portals, uh, our internal developer platforms. Um, and it was through these conversations that we decided, hey, you know, we're looking at this problem, right? So this is the, the CNCF uh, technology radar. And we were all trying to figure out where we were all like placing our bets. Like, what are you using for this capability? What are you using for that capability? And it was from these conversations that we kind of realized, like, well, why don't we get together and place our bets together, um, and 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 actually build a uh, industry standard reference implementation of an internal developer platform using CNCF technologies? Next slide. So the first thing that we did um, is we we actually set the technology aside and we said, what is an internal developer platform from a capability standpoint? You know, uh, I think Adobe had a capability map, um, Autodesk had a capability map. Um, a couple other members had other capability maps and we got together and actually spent a good amount of time like merging them together and trying to like create one common capability map that we can use to organize our efforts. This is actually really powerful because it allows us to be able to look at the capabilities that make up an internal developer platform, define what they provide and the integrations in between them. So now I'll hand off to Nima so we talk about what we're doing with this capability map. Sure. So. As Brandon mentioned, you know, when you want to take technologies and map them to the capability map that um, that we came up with, it's a really difficult solution, right? Because you have, it's a re really difficult problem because you have over 300 different technologies in the CNCF technology landscape. And then now you try to decide which one of these technologies you need to pick for each one of the capabilities that are in the, in the capability map, right? And we started working with all these organizations and you know, we realized that this is a big industry problem. Everyone knows that picking up solutions or technologies from the CNCF landscape is difficult, but we haven't uh, seen a, a solution that tries to tackle that problem and provides you with an, an actual implementation of that capability. So the one thing that we saw was that there is a consistency and there is a rhythm to platform journey across all these organizations and every other organization that we work with at AWS. Um, users need to choose the stack that they want to use to build their capability map. Then they need to go and build the stack for the capability map. Then they need to test the stack. And then after all of this, they need to promote the adoption of the stack within their, organ uh, within their own organization by the application teams. And eventually they have to scale the stack so that it can actually grow to the scale of the organization. And what we started to, to aim for within Canoe was to try and provide a solution to each one of these problems with the Canoe work. 
So let's just start by choosing the stack. Brandon mentioned that a number of companies came together and they started sharing the technologies that they've chosen for this stack that they want to build, right? So Autodesk, Adobe, Intuit, Tulio, Salesforce, um, and Nike, together with AWS, we have been in constant conversations about what are the right set of technologies that you can use to build the, the, the technology stack for your internal developer platform. So we have and basically settled on a subset of technologies that we think can address the requirements or the capabilities in a capability map, right? And we've started, you know, kind of like building momentum around choosing these technologies and combining them in a way that they can actually work seamlessly for you to move to the next step, which is building the stack. So this basically me makes Kinu an internal developer platform distribution that actually is tried to be built on the open source CNCF technologies. So the reason I refer to it as a distribution is that there is an analogy between the GNU IDP and the Linux distribution. With, in case of a Linux distribution, you have the Linux kernel as the core, and then you have all these opinionated, self-selected set of open source tooling that go on top of the Linux kernel and eventually uh, build or construct the Linux distribution. So in case of an IDP distribution, what we have is that you have Kubernetes as the underlying platform and you want to choose a set of technologies, open source technologies that sit on top of it to deliver that developer platform experience, right? So you see the analogy there, like Kubernetes as the base versus kernel as the base and then all the CNCF technologies compared to the, the, the open source tooling that goes on top of Linux. So once we have this idea of um, an IDP distribution solidified, then we go after building the stack. And the first step in building the stack is to have an environment where the developers can easily compose these separate technologies, building blocks, and then deliver on the promise of the IDP. So in order to do that, in Kinu, we have built a tool called the IDP Builder. It's a single stack, all-inclusive um, open source project that gets you up and running with a, with a platform um, with, on your desktop machine using the set of technologies that I referred to early on. So you can use it for development purposes. You can use it for test purposes as well, which takes us to the next step. And like you can do integrations with existing patterns that we've developed. You can pull in some of this and the experiences that we have in place and then experiment with the building of the platform um, the way you like it. Then comes the testing of the stack. The good thing with the IDP builder is that, as I mentioned, it's a single stack um, implementation of a developer platform, which basically means that you can use it on all the popular um, you know, testing platforms. You can reuse it in GitHub code spaces, in dev pods, in Cloud9, in, in CI CD containers. So the same experience that you actually develop with, you can be tested in the CI environments. Then it's about adopting the stack, right? Once you build this stuff and once you've composed the tooling together, you need to take it to the application teams and promote the, the developer platform that you've built for them. And this is the area where we've seen, you know, there is, um, you know, the biggest challenge for the platform engineering teams. They need to convince um, the application teams for adoption. So the way Canoe helps with, the, with that is that, first of all, you can rely on the history of success that we've seen with some of these customers. When you take the IDP builder tooling and the IDP um, stack that Canoe promotes, you can say that essentially the stack that you've put together is very similar to the stack that is used by the Canoe member companies, right? And that brings you some instant credibility with some of the teams that you're going to be working with. But also, we've built tooling that allows you to onboard your application teams to the Canoe stack. You can help them bring their Terraform modules to the Canoe stack, their cross-plane compositions to the, to, the, to the Canoe stack, or other application CRDs that they've developed. And we have had toolings that allows you to, to, to convert them to templates that then can be integrated into the developer portal in this case, backstage, for them to utilize it, um, utilize those templates essentially out of the box. Now, the last step uh, is scaling the stack. 
And as, as you've seen, and the, the members of Kinu are enterprise scale companies with tens of thousands of users and hundreds of thousands of services, right? So the technologies that we choose for the Kinu stack need to be able to adopt to the scale of these enterprise scale companies. In order for us to ensure that the Kinu stack can actually achieve it, we have done a lot of scalability work um, with these particular technologies. We've published about running 10,000 10, Argo applications um, with 100 um, workload clusters using Argo CD. We have extended the work to support 50,000 Argo CD applications and 5,000 um, workload clusters for Argo CD. We have done developer best practices around utilizing Backstage as the source of truth for like pulling in application information into your developer portal. And now we're doing like in a latest series of works, we're doing a scalability testing with Argo Workflow 2. And as we bring more of the technologies into the Canoe stack, we're going to increase the amount of work that we will do in terms of ensuring the scalability and compatibility when it comes to integrating these technologies with one another. So um, one thing that I want to mention before I get to the closing remarks of the talk is that the Canoe stack that we're promoting um, is opinionated, but it doesn't mean that Canoe is only limited to the set of technologies that we've chosen now. We are going to release the idea of stacks um, in, in the next few months, which essentially allows any organization to come and join the Canoe community and define and introduce their spin to running a platform on top of Canoe um, as a way to promote their tooling and their technology. So if you think you've built tooling and technologies that fits the definition of a developer platform, and if, if you think that's something that you want to promote within the context of Canoe and with the customers of Canoe, with the user groups that Canoe has, um, you are more than welcome to join us in the Canoe community and collaborate with us. You can find us on the CNCF Slack channel under Canoe-Interest. You can also reach out to us using the Canoe website, canoe.io. And you know everything we do in Canoe is fully open source, Apache 2.0 licensed, free to use um, uh, for everyone who's interested. So with that, I think um, you know, we are at the end of the time and I make a pause there in case there are any questions. Let me actually stop sharing so it becomes a little bit easier. I think you all are muted, Daniel. Here talking away. Uh, thank you so much for that. Um, we do have a question that just came up, so that that's timely. Um, are there plans to integrate the Canoe CLI more closely into the IDP builder so that it automatically and regularly oh, leases? You cannot control the mouse. Um, regularly records the currently installed. CRDs, API contacts, and transfer them to backstage templates. Yes, totally. That's part of the plan too. I think we're moving towards like a more, more cohesive single binary that allows you to do your IDP related tasks. And so yes, integrating the Canoe CLI with the IDP builder is on the roadmap. Awesome. Well, um, I'm sure you'll stick around for a few minutes. So if you do have any additional questions um, for anyone attending, uh, please ask them. And thank you so much for yeah, being here. And, and, being and thanks to Autodesk. This is the second time we've had Tiffany and Jackia on Cube Crash before. So it's been really great to have a uh, um, Autodesk as Cube Crash alumni come back and and it's so great to hear what what end users like and, and corporations like Autodesk are doing in cloud native and in open source. So thank you for all you do and for contributing to these projects and thanks for coming in and telling us about them. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to remove you both now.